Welcome back to this segment this Tuesday, January the 9th of Village in Motion. I'm Clint Lambert, the host today for this segment, and I have with me Kimberly Nelson, who is our Director of Philanthropy, and we're just so glad to have Kimberly with us this morning. It's Kimberly, how are you? Good morning. It's great to be here. Yeah, great. And great to not have it be quite so cold outside. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, I mean, it's a little slippery out this morning, you know, cleaning off mm. the car. It was covered with ice. Right. But much better than the wind and yes. the such we've had the last couple days. And even with the fog, you can tolerate that if you stay inside and wait for it to burn off. Yes. <laughs> so I would say if you don't have plans, stay in a little longer today, maybe by the afternoon. Right. Uh, and definitely tomorrow looks like there a great go. day yes. to be out and about. And thirsty even better. <laughs> yes. So that's wonderful. There you go. So, um, but so. I just came to talk a little bit about philanthropy and yes. things that are happening in the community. Okay. and. I can't believe 2018 is here already. Isn't it amazing? But you guys did so well in 2017 <sighs> in regard to philanthropy and, and helping so much here at Green Spring. Yeah, we did. Thank you. And we only could do that because of the really the residents. You, the residents are just sort of the backbone to all the giving here at Green Spring. And it doesn't matter if it's the scholarship fund, the benevolent care fund, hospice, but even things like the Echo Food Drive, mm -hmm. the Blood Drive, the Turkey Trot. Okay. Um, there's so much outreach mm -hmm. that, um, you know, we're so grateful and thankful to right. be at Green Spring. Do you have a figure off the top in, in regards to all the philanthropy that was the funds that were given to various projects here? So, you know what, I do not have all the turkey trot numbers and some of the other numbers, but when I think of the Benevolent Care Fund, the Scholarship Fund, the Hospice Fund, so those charitable funds are over a million dollars. Wow. Then you add staff appreciation. While it's not a charitable fund, it is still very important right. to giving. the giving spirit of the community, which was again another 300,000. And then you add, um, you know, the turkey trot and, and you know, just, so and then like the gifts of time. Yeah. Oh yeah, I time's mean, invaluable. <laughs> yes, totally. So it was just a very exciting year. And um, I wanna make sure residents know that, you know, in, November before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. our office sent out, it's usually a yellow form, where it gives you sort of your charitable giving mm -hmm. that has been done through our office right. as of October 31st. Mm -hmm. And so most residents do most of their giving prior to that right. time frame. And so hopefully you have that for your tax person and you can match your checks and receipts that we had the right information. Right. But if you've given something from November to the end of the year, mm -hmm. or if you've misplaced that form, right. which does happen. Oh, as well, that does happen around here. Yes, <laughs> as you're gathering your tax things, then please just call our office and then give us a few days and we can put an, another one in your cubby. Oh, tremendous. Very, okay, very so good. it's just sort of a helpful hint. Of course, everyone, you don't need that form mm -hmm. if you've gotten sort of the official thank you letter from our office right. where it talks about goods and services. Right. So that is always the best receipt with your canceled check mm -hmm. or if you're doing giving through your monthly statement, right. just a copy of your statement that had that. Okay. But if you go, ooh, I'm not 100% sure, we can help give you that summary to help guide you and give you a little extra documentation. In regards to that, because you're talking about receipts to use for uh, taxes. Yes. In regards to it. And with the new tax law, is that going to change things in regards to philanthropy, in regards to our donations? Are you have any information about that? So I haven't heard anything yet about any of that. So my understanding is for 2018, um, I haven't heard anything that will change. Okay. Now, I'm sure as more things come clearer, we'll know if there are implications. Right. But at the moment, it's still January, mm -hmm. I have not heard anything. Oh, okay. So I'm hoping if it affects us, it affects us in a positive way and we can make even <laughs> more go. of a deduction exactly. count. So this exactly. is what I would hope. Exactly. But I, I really do not know, to be quite frank. And as soon as we have information of any change and things come out through the IRS and so right. on, we will be happy to update residents. Okay. Very good. But as you're also thinking about not only your tax statements, you know, sort of this is in January, people think of New Year's resolutions. Yes. What haven't I done that I need to do? What have I um, thought about doing and haven't double checked? Right. 
And one of those things that seems to come up are things related to your estate plan. Ah. Yes. Your will, your trust, your advanced directives. Mm -hmm. And so um, it's not out yet, so you're hearing it first here, but on Wednesday, January 31st, mm -hmm. John Ritzert, who is one of the attorneys yes. who comes in and does programs for us, will be coming back. Sure. He does sort of a new year, new year, any changes you need to know. Um, estate planning question and answer so he usually will do a 15 or 20 minute overview and then really open the floor okay. so people often say gosh I've been here five years do I need to have my documents looked at again um, and so that sort of helps mm -hmm. right. or I moved from another state, state yeah. What do I need to change or do different? So if you haven't looked at things, you think of a new year, right. it's a great time to check it. Um, it's free, we'll put flyers and information out because right. it is still a few weeks away, but it is coming. Yeah, you, you mentioned moving from another state, which we did, my yes. wife and I did 10 years ago, and never thought about the fact of, of laws changing between yes. states in regards to wills uh, yes. you know, and, and directives and those kinds of yeah. things. And so we were very pleased to go to our attorney yes. and get everything updated and, and change that we need to do. And yes, it's a great opportunity to ask those questions about it and yes. get something done. Yes, and it's sometimes, it's also reassuring because sometimes residents will come and they will be reassured that everything's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes just knowing I don't have to do anything right. is also really important. Yes. And yes. so um, I would say if you haven't been to one of his programs in the last year or two, might be the year for you to come and get some information and just again verify you don't have to use his services it gives you maybe questions to ask of whatever attorney you are using right. um, just to help give clarity of something that might be unclear yeah. so that's really helpful Good. and then of course JG Jewelry will be back as she always is helpful so look for that information but I wanted to, if I have a couple minutes. We have about four, about three or four okay, minutes. Okay, great. So the philanthropy committee also has some new committee members who have joined our committee this year. Oh, great. And so I just want to sort of do a little shout out to some of those names and they'll Please. be coming on in future programs. Mm -hmm. Um, a little bit under duress probably because <laughs> I don't know why no one wants to go on TV with me I don't know why <laughs> but we will get them on sometime Good. over the course of the year That's to right. be introduced but um, first of all how many people do you have on that committee all total oh <laughs> man 10 10 okay. so I had to think all right and then um, the new ones are Doug Franklin okay Evelyn Jones Estelle Marler mm -hmm. and Virginia Sumner. Wonderful. So we really want to do an extra special shout out to Doug Franklin because he is the brave man in a committee of all women. Oh, need, need that male representation. And so we know he has great patience, <laughs> but also great insight. Yes. And so we're really thankful, um, not just for Doug, but for really everyone mm -hmm. for joining in the committee. And then Colonel Sally Pritchett uh, is also the chair sure. this year, and she's sort of been our anchor with that and so if you have questions please see um, Sally or myself and all four of these members really at the village fair we had a table saying are you interested in either helping when we have little projects like folding and stuffing or are you interested in the committee yeah, right. and then over the last couple months after that folks have come forward to Wonderful. say I might be interested and so we've been able to sort of share more information so they know what they're getting into mm -hmm. because that committee while we meet monthly there are also many things behind the scenes whether it's getting prepared for the scholarship campaign right. these educational seminars there'll be quite a few fraud prevention seminars coming up this year um, not just the postal inspector we have the attorney general's office coming and we also have someone coming to do from the um, Fairfax County to do one specifically on phone scams mm, wow. because that seems to be a really a hotter button mm -hmm. here at Greenspring and that one will come in April um, as well so a lot of good things coming down the pike sounds great so we just really appreciate everyone's support and if they have questions just reach out to us and we will do our very best to uh, either get to your tax statement or help answer your questions thank you so much Kimberly thanks and, you know you guys do a wonderful job and we appreciate having the department thanks here. so much thank you.